Today's session is Origin Plus Workstation on tool joinery. So take it away, Jake. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, thank you everyone for joining. And we're going to start this off with a couple of slides, um, show what we're going to be focusing on today, and then we're going to dive into some actual cutting and assembling of a stool and a box jointed box. So let's go to the slides. All right. Origin and Workstation, the perfect combo, specifically on tool joinery. No computers involved today, all only on tool CAD. And so, on tool joinery, we're going to show you how to use the grid. We're going to focus on design and placement, uh, workspaces and duplicating and naming workspaces, and then our box joint basic plugin and fixturing tips and tricks. Our first project is a Morrison tenon stool. It's got two different types of tenon, a more of a simple tenon on top, and then a more complicated through tenon on the bottom. And then followed, we're making, we'll be making a drawer, one of the drawers for a, a sort of a field secretary that's entirely box jointed all on tool. So a little bit of a cutaway on our Morrison tenon stool. You can see our top tenon directly under the seat it's more of a shallow tenon versus our lower tenons go all the way through. But you see that little step in that lower tenon? I want to show you what that looks like on the actual stool. And there's a reason why we did it. So we have these shorter tenons here because all of our material is one inch by one inch. So if we had our full frame, our tenons would knock into each other when they come across. That's why we stepped these lower supports up slightly so we can get a full through tenon and also kind of give us an aesthetic advantage of having the circular tenon on the edge. What this step also allows us to do is we can cut this using the stock cutter that comes with Origin, which has a length of cut of three quarters of an inch. So instead of being able to do an inch and a half long full tenon, we have to kind of be crafty about this and step it so that each of these sections is three quarters of an inch and allows us to get a full depth tenon. So, like I said, all of our stock, one and a half by one and a half. And our top tenons, we're going to make them half an inch by inch, rounded on the corners because we're, using, we're only using a quarter inch uh, diameter bit today. And our bottom tenon is inch by inch with a three quarter inch circle. And that's what's going to come through as a circle tenon. Something that the square portion also does on this lower tenon is it gives us a square registration. When we're assembling this, kind of, it gives us the appeal of a circular through tenon, but the accuracy of a nice rigid square tenon. All right, let's start cutting this. We're going to start with that, that simpler top tenon. Uh, it's right here. I've already cut one side, but we're going to step over to the workstation and start with how we fixture this into the workstation. So I have my registration pins on the left-hand side fully out. That's what I'm going to be pressing the material against. And that's going to allow me that repeatability so that I don't necessarily need to grid every single time because all my stock is, is the same exact dimension. And for our vertical, I'm going to use the support bar to get our height right. So that slips in right there clamps down, and now I can take, ah, yeah, there we go. So that first picture right there, this is, this is actually directly out of the manual that comes with Workstation. We spent a lot of time making this as illustrative as possible, so if you have any questions, just refer back to your manu manual, and it'll give you a better idea of what to do. So I'm pressing up against those left-hand pins. I'm pressing up against that vertical, or that, I'm sorry, the top bar. And we're going to be using this stock clamps that come with Workstation today. So snugging up that one. And then using this one down here to add a little extra support. And boom. Now this, right under the support bars, snug, uh, don't quite snug it up to your material. You actually want to leave. I always run my finger through it. That kind of helps. You don't want to be too close 
because your cutter is going to come through. You don't want to run into this aluminum crossbar. So have plenty of space. It's really just to support the back end of origin so that when you slide it over, your touch bar is actually resting directly on there. And we want our touch bar to be on a solid surface because we're going to be touching off directly on the top edge of this material. So let's dive in. Let's start with a scan. We're going to make our workstation or our workspace. We're going to name our workspaces so we can jump back and forth between that longer tenon and the shorter tenon. And if something happens down the road, we lose one, one gets damaged, we can always quickly make another one by just jumping back into that workstation. So I'm going to start with a scan. New scan. Also, once you own a workstation, you scan it so many times that it really starts to, it helps to name your projects when you're doing them. Because when you look through all your workspaces, they all start to look the same because it's all just the workstation. So if I hop back up into scan, over into workspaces, well, you can see what I was talking about. They all look the same. But we're on workspace 87. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to duplicate it. And then I'm going to name it. So this first one, that number 87, rename. I'm going to name that Tenon Stool Upper. Oops. Now, I'm going to keep this naming convention, Tenon Stool. That's the name of the project. I'm going to call everything Tenon Stool. And then the last word is what the part is. So boom. We have our Tenon Stool Upper. And I'm going to rename this one for our next one, Tenon Stool Oops. Lower. Now, when I'm looking for those workspaces, I could just start type in on the search bar tenon stool, and both the lower and upper workspaces will show up for me. So I want to make sure oh, I'm on the right one. On the upper, cool. So that's my scan that we're looking at. That's the top of my tenon. I'm going to create a grid, new grid. And we're going to do a 0.75 inch grid. And that is because uh, our material is inch and a half. So we want to split that in half. Bring my cutter down. So I have my cut quarter inch cutter actually fairly far out. I'm still grabbing enough of the shaft to be to have a good hold of it, but because I want that inch and a half of depth, I have it just a hair over inch and a half out. So I'm going to create that grid first there, bringing it over to that other corner. Boom. And then round the outside. There we go. That gives me that nice clear and obvious center point. And everything is going to be based off of that center point. Hop into Create. We're going to do a rectangle, well, technically a rounded rectangle. And our width is 0.5. Our height is 1. And our radius is 0.25. Make sure you grab that center. And look, it's just, it snaps right to that center. I'll place that. And we're cutting the outside. So if you look, I have all this material over here that I need to clear out still. A couple of ways to do that. I could mess with offsets and step that out and cut, you know, offset by offset. I think that's going to take longer than I would like to. So I'm actually going to create another shape on either side of it, just a rectangle, one inch by two inches. And I'm going to set it right next to it. Copy. And right on the other side. We're going to use these as pockets. So hover, pocket, pocket. 
that's going to hog out that material. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this. We're going down to a half inch depth, cutting into some soft wood and into the end grain. So I'm ac it actually allows me to cut uh, a little deeper than I would if I was doing into cross grain. So I will not be doing quarter inch passes. I'll be doing half inch passes. And you'll notice I have a nice sharp bit and it's not going to give me any resistance. But that's because I know the material and I've worked with it before. You should always err on the side of caution when you're starting with a, a new material. Learn what characteristics it has. So I'm going to jump into cutting this. Ah, I almost forgot. Most important thing. I just chucked this up. I haven't Z-touched on it yet. So it knows my quarter inch cutter is in there. I'm going to come down to the edge of my material and I'm going to Z-touch. Every single time I put a new piece in my workstation, I want to Z-touch because I want to know exactly where that is every time so my depth is accurate. All right, now I'm going to cut. All right, so we got that tenon cut. We got no, no chip out because our spoil board in the back here is nice and scooched up uh, to our material. You can adjust that tension with that four millimeter wrench. Right here, there's these screws. You can just, you wanna apply a little bit of pressure to the back of your material. Not enough to where you're deflecting it, just enough to where it's supporting the fibers. You can see that in figure five, a, that little cam clamp, that's applying that slight bit of pressure to the back. All right, so we're ready to pull this shorter tenon out. There you go. So I'm going to set this to the side. Since I've already, you know, for time's sake, I've already cut the other side, but in the instance, if I hadn't, and I just cut this top piece, what I'm going to want to do when I'm ready to cut the other piece, it's very important of how you flip it because you want to keep referencing the same edge. I'm going to flip it end over end, still referencing that same piece. I even go as far as to marking this edge with an X in pencil. Pretty much applies to anything you're doing on workstation. Workstation, you want that repeatability, that same edge, whether it be a box joint or a margin tenon. Remember your edges. All right. We're going to cut that step tenon now. Going to place our support bar. Make sure my X is there. Hey, Jake, Apparently, while you're getting set up, when yeah. you make the cut this time, uh, I think your mic's going to remain live. Would you mind kind of just talking through the steps that you're doing? Uh, any, you know, pocking operation offsets when you go to zero, etc. Absolutely. I wasn't sure if it was live or not, but 
I'm glad it is. All right, nice and secure. Support bar back on at least a finger distance, more like like two of your bit diameters to be safe. It's not fun when you accidentally run into aluminum like that. Uh, and we're ready to go. First thing we're gonna do, we just we just swapped out this piece. There's a new piece, even though we referenced off that crossbar, for for your for, to ease your your mind, Z touch. So we're gonna make sure our Z touch bar is on the support bar, and we're gonna Z touch. Boom. Now, same size material, referencing the same pins but it's a different file, so we're gonna go back into scan. We're gonna jump over to our other workspace that we created earlier. Go back into workspaces, and now we're doing the lower. See, now we still have that blank slate. I'm gonna create that grid again real quick. I love the noise Origin makes when it lowers like that. Our size is 0.75, bit 25, 0.25, and there we go. So, boom, drag it over, boom, drag it over, boom. Gives us that same center point. Now, we're gonna make that slightly more complicated joint. We're gonna start in a rectangle, just a one inch, by one inch, by quarter inch radius, center anchor. Boom. And you can see up here too, if you're in a big field of your grid and you want a clear digital readout, it's telling me X, Y, 0 0.75, 0 0.75. And that is from that point right there. Three quarters of an inch up and over. Place that right there, back into create, Grab your circle. Let's do a 0.7. Oops, 0.75. Center anchor. Yes. Boom. Already centered. So you see, it's snapping right there. So I don't have to worry about like little inconsistencies. And there we go. Swap these over to outside. Outside. All right. So, same situation as before, except I'm going to use offsets this time, this time to cut away this extra material over here. I'm going to go kind of wide with it, 0.25. Boom. Uh, and I'm going to jump around. I'll explain it as I go, but I kind of have to step my way into that, that final dimension on the inside, uh, keeping in mind that the length of cut on my cutter is only three quarters of an inch. So let's get started. Going in half inch increments, so one inch. Being careful around those corners because I don't want to chip out or anything. And then our final depth is 1.5. Oops. I'll pause real quick just to adjust my cutter length. It's, it's telling me the max length of cut is 1.47. All I need to do is adjust my cutter so that it gives me that extra 0.03 of, of cutting depth. And maybe while you're adjusting that, I can explain that a little bit more. So the z-axis travel of origin is about 1.75 inches. Now, in practice, uh, you could achieve that. that, that that's the, the actual z-axis travel. But uh, depending on how you have chucked up your cutter and where your Z-touch 
was performed, you may not experience that range of travel. So in this case, Jake uh, had apparently had the cutter in a little bit far. And so he's just adjusting that now. And I'm sure once he puts it back in, he'll probably do what, Jake? A Z touch. Z -touch. <laughs> and then uh, come right back to it. But that's a, it's a good example. This was an unscripted example of uh, how it's nice to be able to just come right back to where you were cutting. And also, yeah. uh, I guess while I have the mic here, Jake, um, might be worth explaining. You were kind of, you know, buzzing through there pretty quickly and in, in big increments. And that's because you were doing, you know, really uh, outside roughing passes. Is that accurate? Yes. And also, I've noticed the poplar cuts, poplar cuts for me with a really sharp bit. Uh, quite well, so it allows me to do half inch increments versus a, my my typical quarter inch increment. But these, I'm just working from the outside of the shape, and I'm working my way into the final shape. So th these are still roughing passes, yes. All right. So good, good pro tip technique for people. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to go back up to 0.5 and we're going to sneak our offset in. We're going to do 0.02. So 0.02 is my natural offset. When I'm cutting something, my rough pass has a 0.02 offset. You see just that little bit of space away from my final line. That's going to allow me to be quick. And it's also going to be forgiving. Now we're going down to one inch. And you'll see as I come around the outside of this tenon just how much I'm taking off. It's beautiful too. It makes, when you're cutting this deep and with a nice sharp bit, it makes, uh, it doesn't make dust, it makes beautiful curly chips. up a bit. Now I got a nice long post. And 0.75. I'm going to cut our circular portion of the tenon. Still in rough cut mode. But by doing this, it's going to allow us to cut our lower tenon without running into the upper tenon. Doing my final pass now with a zero inch offset on the top circular tenon. Being nice and steady now. Especially because it's a through tenon, any inconsistencies you're gonna see when it, once it comes through the side of the, of the stool. So I'm gonna be nice and stable. Back down to my one 1.5 inches to do a final pass over here. All right. I'll show you what that looks like up close. Jake, while you...
you're doing that, there's a couple of questions coming in that we could we could answer in context. Some people had questions about what cutter you're using. Can you clarify? Yeah, I'm just using the standard cutter that comes with Origin, specifically the quarter inch two fluted end mill upcut. So if you own an Origin, so you will have spiral one upcut. Of these. Spiral upcut. You can also buy them in our online store or in your local cheaper dealer. All right. I now have my two horizontal tenons, but we need to cut our final leg. So tenons on both sides. This is the upper, this is the lower. We got to cut one more of these legs. I've gone ahead and done myself a favor. Before I started doing this, I went and just gave myself some marks on my wood, knowing that there's a mortise here, a mortise here, a mortise there, and a mortise there. So let's move to another application of the workstation, the shelf. The shelf there, there's When I'm doing the mortise, there's a couple of ways I could do this, both of which first, in, first involve raising the clamping, clamping face. I'll do that all the way to the top. Snug those up. Now, since I'm cutting a mortise right here, one way I could do it is I could clamp this using the clamps from underneath, but I'm going to use the shelf because I have some double sided tape on here and because I want to show off the shelf, and I also love the shelf. Slide it on, give about medium, uh, medium pull on that. And I'm going to set my height. So I'm going to do the same thing with that cross member. I'm going to, uh, sorry, the support bar, snap it in, place my piece on top, and press it firmly up against the bottom of the support bar and clamp it into place. And that's how I can set my, my Z height. Boom. There we go. And I don't need the support bar anymore. I'm going to set that to the side. And just double check the feel of the piece. It feels good. So I can take that double sided tape. I am going to start on this edge. And I'm going to use that pin again, that registration pin. So if I'm doing all the legs, I can just keep registering flat against that pin, flat against my support or my clamping face and stick that double stake tape down. Applying good pressure. All right, let's do a new scan. Ba -ba -da -ba. Hovering off the piece, wanna get a good clean image of that. And we're going to create a grid. Oops, same size grid, three quarters of an inch, 0.75. And adjust my depth here. Depth, depth. I spread these apart quite a bit, just so I have a nice. Like the further they are apart, the straighter line is I always if I have the length I like to go pretty far apart between one and two. So that's giving me that center line all the way down my piece. And this process is basically the opposite of creating the tenons. Back to create. Get that rectangle. This time our width is one and our height is 1.5. But our corner radius is still a quarter inch. Center, anchor, voila, right there. 
I'm going to scoot down my piece, so I'll zoom out and show you, down my piece to seven and a half inches. And create that double step tenon. Quarter inch radius. Place that in a circle at 0.75. Now, I can just copy those and sneak them down to nine. <clears throat> now, I'm not going to cut these on the same size, on the same side, but I'm going to rotate my piece and cut the next one over. A little speedy trick to get us going. They're already inside cuts. That's good. That's what I like to see. I'm going to cut this one first, and I'm going to start with a helix. So I'm actually going to do a bigger offset so it brings it inside. You see how that helix button showed up? I'm going to cut all the way down just to clear out that deep material first. <laughs> What that's doing is helically cutting, so it's adjusting its depth appropriately as it goes down. Let me kind of show you on this camera while I break this little peg out that it left. And that I did that just so it doesn't snap on me if I went all the way through. So then I just a little toothpick. You know, 0 0.02. Uh, we're going into cross grain, so I'm going to do the appropriate depth movements of quarter inch. And half inch. And I'm going to give myself a little bit more room on the mortise. I'm going to do 0 0.76 instead of 0.75. So a little room for glue, mainly for glue. And while I'm here, I'm going to, I know I need a negative offset. And I've done this before, so I'm going to do negative 5,000. That's going to give me room to fit my tenon in once it's time for assembly. Being nice and ginger on this one. This is my final cut. All right, clear some of those deeper chips out. Move back to our circle. Mm -mm. Going all, oh, not helix. Turn that off. I'm doing one big foul swoop around the inside. And again, with that negative 5,000. Excellent. 
And there we go. That's our first double stepped tenon. I'm going to come up here and do this top tenon really quick, though. That one is. So a 0.02 offset, two depth passes. Adding that 0.01 just to give it a little bit of room for glue in the back end. We'll do slightly less than 5 thou because I know this one's going to be a little bit more loose a bit. But in all, all these things, when you're making a mortise and tendon, you want to test it along the way. So if this was the first time I was doing this, I would have cut it to zero. I would have taken my piece here. And I would have come up to it and said, okay, even though they're the same shape, they're both cut to zero, I'm going to try to test fit it. All right, it doesn't fit. Take a negative two, three thousandth off of it. Test fit it. Cut, test fit. I know that point oh. 0 0.004 negative is exactly what I'm looking for to give a nice friction fit. That would use just a light tap of a hammer and we'd come together. Knock off some of the fuzz from the upcut. Again, using this incredibly handy sanding stick. I love this thing. All right, now we're ready to rotate. Twist that off. Bada bing. So you can see that all the way through. And I'm going to cut next one. I'll try to hustle through this one so we get to all of our material today. But same situation, firmly up against this, the clamping face, against that pin, and press down. Now everything is still there, but what I'm going to do is clear my cut history just so I know what I'm doing and where I'm at. And instead of cutting this one, now I'm cutting this one. So that 1.4, that 0.05, helix on, let's go. You probably noticed that some of my cuts are blue and this one is more towards a black. That means the deeper, the deeper you go, the darker the color of your cut path is going to be. So since I'm nearing the end of my, or the max depth travel, it's really dark. Uh, 25, 0.02. Get hustling on this. Giving myself a little room. And that final pass of negative point zero zero five. <laughs> I 
There we go. Helix off. Going straight down to it. There we go. That centerpiece knocked loose. Lovely. Let's get this second one going here. All right, there's my, there's my Morris's. Pry that guy off. There we go, you see that slight offset of the bottom ones? And we'll set this to the side. I wanna make sure that we have time to talk about box joints because it was something our team worked really hard to put directly into Origins on tool software. And it really is uh, an incredibly fast and efficient way to, to make box joints. So here, we the overall project is going to be kind of a field secretary, but we're spe specifically doing one of the internal drawers. Our drawer is about three and a half inches tall. We're going to do seven pins, a couple different options on your pin number. You can either do an odd or an even pin number. Odd pins give you that symmetrical look versus even pins give you the asymmetrical look. I'm personally a fan of the symmetrical look, so I'm gonna go ahead and do seven pins today. And here is my material. Ah, so there's also the, this side A and side B, which you can switch back and forth between. I've already cut my side A's, and I've cut one of my side B's, so I'm gonna cut my last side B so that we can assemble it. There's also, you can also cut the slot. Instead of using a table saw to cut your slot from the bottom for the bottom of your drawer, you can also do that directly on Origin. Bringing my support bar back down, we're going to be cutting into it. Back at it with the clamps. Firmly against the pins. Firmly up. And we're tightening. Okay. My other clamp has gone rogue. There it is. Sneak this guy in on the bottom here. All right. 
first thing we're going to do, scan, grid, Z-touch. Bada bing, bada boom. Good image of that. We'll create a one in or grid size at the moment doesn't really matter. But I do want to adjust my depth. there and come to the edge. Now under the create tab, you have your box joint basic. I'm going to give it a little bit of information. My thickness is actually more like 0.485. That's the thickness of my material. My width is 3.5. I want a total number of seven pins and I want a built-in glue gap of five thousandths of an inch. And I get to just place that right there at zero, zero. It's showing me my A tab, but I really need the B tab. And we're ready to cut. Throw my support bar on there so I can Z touch before we start cutting. So I want my depth to be dead on. Z touch. And your depth is the same number as the thickness of your material. That was my rough pass. I'm going to come back in with zero. There we go. Now for the crucial moment. How are we gonna what are we gonna do when we want to do the other side of this? And we want to be able to reference the same exact edge. Flip it and whoop, and over end. We're using that same edge. Pop this back into place. Same process, firmly up against the top, firmly over against the pins. And crank it on down. Wham, bam. Back to your origin screen. Hey, I knew it was gonna happen, I tried my best. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for giving get, you the time. Jake's that getting I the have. hook from uh, <laughs> stage left here, just in the interest of time. But uh, no, seriously, Jake, that was an incredible session, and we thank you for uh, for teaching us all the tips and tricks. Uh, I could watch that all day long. I'm sure other My people pleasure. would would uh, would agree with me. And uh, for for those of you watching who already have Origin Plus Workstation, we hope you. Uh, put all these good tips and tricks to use and go make something for yourself. If you don't already own Origin, if you're new to watching this and just learning about it, hopefully you're now inspired to uh, to go ahead and jump in head first. Uh, so, so how can you jump in? Uh, just want to remind everybody that you can visit your local Shaper dealer. We have a dealer locator lo located on our site for dealers that are open during COVID time. Uh, and of course, you could also order at shapertools.com, and we have a 30-day risk-free trial. So really, there's 
nothing to hold you back from giving this a try. And uh, those of you who have already ordered Workstation are waiting patiently for yours. Uh, I'm happy to report that there are no delays uh, reported there. So uh, hang in there and the shipping date that you received uh, with your confirmation email should be valid. Looking good on that front. So thanks again, Jake, and awesome session.